So I would like to introduce very briefly uh, Rajesh. So uh, Rajesh, I will uh, say just a few words about your background. Um, you are very uh, experienced in uh, CAD, so computer aided design, and um, and you have a, a, an impressive background. So um, yeah, uh, you you have uh, studied uh, in uh, in India. You have a, a lot of experience in UK, in US, and you have founded in 2005 Prototech Solutions. And you will uh, today present some of your um, I would say deliverables and. Uh, I end solution. So, Rajesh, you have the floor. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Rajesh Bhartia, founder and CEO of Prototech Solutions. Here's my brief introduction. I have a multidisciplinary engineering background, and since last two decades, I have helped design and develop numerous 3D applications spanning various domains such as design, manufacturing, agriculture, mining, architecture, etc. I am also a part of the leadership team at 3D MajorUp. 3D MajorUp is a technology platform for 3D body landmark identification and measurement extraction. Our vision is to be a perfect fit in anthropometry space. We use a combination of computational, geometrical and machine learning techniques to achieve a very high fidelity in feature identification and a very high degree of accuracy in measurements. Today, I'm going to discuss some of the challenges that we faced with 3D body scans that are not perfectly aligned. Also, I will discuss the impact of natural body postures on automatic extraction of measurements. I will give you a very high level overview of our approach to overcome these challenges. Before I get to that, we all know that COVID-19 has impacted almost everything that we do and the way we do. COVID-19 has had a huge impact on everything, including 3D body scanning, processing and measurement extraction industry. The new normal of social distancing has pushed contactless measurement from being novelty to a necessity. This has become a need for masses now. I'll take my own example. I had never bought a single piece of cloth, be it a suit, my running shorts, or even socks online in my entire life. Now, since March 2020, I have bought everything online. There are many like me who have been pushed from retail to e-tail. To tap this market, there is a huge increase in the number of 3D scanning devices and methods. Some are more traditional hardware using boots and turntables. On the other hand, Handheld hardware scanners are on the rise and getting into hands of more and more people. New generation Apple devices such as iPad Pro 12 already has a LiDAR sensor which does a decent job of capturing the world in 3D. Amazon's Halo Band, a sub-$100 wearable device, claims to create accurate 3D scans from photographs. On the software side, there is an extensive research and development done on converting 2D photos to 3D scans. Application of computer vision, image processing and machine learning has greatly enhanced the fidelity of this conversion. All this only means that we now have a variety of sources for input for 3D body processing. And when you have different sources and methods, you also have different problems. So let's talk about some of those challenges. With any 3D scan, the first major issue that we face is of alignment. There can be various types of misalignment. Out of those, the most common one is likely to be the coordinate system mismatch. Though there is an ISO standard on this, we found that each scanner has its own choice of which axis will be along the height of the person. This is usually the case with the booth-based or turntable scanners. The fix for this is obviously very simple. It's a transformation. But then the OBJ format does not have the access information in it and hence we have to detect the orientation of the body ourselves. For this, we need to identify the primary features of the body. Another harder problem related to alignment is when the scan is generated using handheld scanner and there is a slight tilt or twist in the facing of the subject towards the camera. Quite often these are minor shifts and are imperceptible to a human eye. 
but they can cause significant deviations in the measurements. To conduct this study, we chose a sample set of about 30 models of different sizes, shapes and postures. I am using a sample set of 4 scan models for illustration purposes here. The bodies were standing in different poses, mostly facing the camera when loaded and tilted either to the left or right. We measured the back shoulder width of actual subject manually. Then we measured the same automatically but did not align the model. As you can see from the results, it is observed that there is a deviation of 4% to 8% in the back shoulder width measurement from the actual measurement depending upon the misalignment. The cause of the deviation was due to the error in locating the shoulder landmarks. Some models were just slightly misaligned, not detectable by the human eye, yet a difference of about an inch was observed. In 3D measure up, we use an iterative geometric technique to solve this problem of alignment. We apply the best fit plane method, which is similar to best fit curve in 2D. The best fit plane for the set of vertices for a human body scan corresponds to the coronal or frontal plane. The coronal plane of the measurement system is along the XY plane. The transformation matrix required to align the coronal plane of the scan with the coordinate system can be found using a similar matrix manipulation. This transformation matrix is then applied to the human scan to align it with our measurement coordinate system. This method has been found reliable for bodies of all shapes, sizes and postures. It is observed that this method is less computationally intensive as well. There is some additional processing required to detect whether the model is facing away from the camera or flipped upside down or both. In which case the model just needs a 180 degree rotation along the y axis or x axis depending on the situation. The same sample set was measured again. This time the measurements were extracted after applying auto alignment using the previously described technique. As you can see, the deviation in back shoulder width got reduced to less than 2% and measurements generated are much closer to the manual measurements. The landmarks most affected by misalignment are the shoulder points, side neck points, armpits, etc. Since these are primary landmarks for most of the measurements and girths, overall reliability of the measurements depend a lot on their accurate detection. Thus, it is very critical to have the scans automatically aligned perfectly before we extract the measurements. Here is a short video which demonstrates the problem and the fix using 3D MajorUp. The model on the left side is a raw body scan which is not aligned perfectly. On the right side, we use auto align button to realign the scan correctly. We can see the difference in measurements of the back shoulder width. It's almost three quarters of an inch. You can also see how the back shoulder line is incorrect on the left side and how it gets fixed when the model is aligned perfectly. Now let's move on to the next major problem in automatic extraction of measurements, which is related to variation in posture of the subjects. Traditional measurement extraction systems have heavily relied on highly constrained standard poses such as A or T. As I described earlier, there is a surge in number of sources that capture body scans and it's not possible to guarantee a perfect A or T pose. Not only that, most of the measurement extraction techniques have based their algorithms assuming bodies of perfect and symmetrical proportions. This is not the case. Scoliosis is a relatively common condition that causes the spine to curve and rotate in a C or S shape instead of a straight line. It is estimated that curves greater than 10 degrees are seen in approximately 3% of the population. There are plenty more variations in postures such as stoop posture, hollow back, slumped or rounded shoulders. When working with body scans and their measurements, one thing we realize 
is that it is very critical to extract the body measurements of people in their natural postures. Imagine you are getting a new suit. If you get yourself measured in an A pose, you will definitely get a perfect fitting suit for yourself when you are standing in A pose. But how often you are going to be standing in A pose for a good fitting suit, the measurement ought to be taken when you are standing in your natural relaxed posture. And remember, there will be a variation in the 3D scan and the body measurements if you are scanned in A pose as against relaxed pose. How you stand in front of the scanner will surely impact shoulder measurements, chest measurements, leg and hip measurements. This table illustrates the deviation from actual measurements when we do not consider posture while extracting measurements. We compared the back shoulder width measurements produced using algorithms and machine learning models trained for erect postures and those developed considering non-standard postures. The cases considered were stooping pose, frozen shoulder, rounded shoulder, square shoulder and sloping shoulders. Again, we observed that there was a deviation of 2% to 8% depending on the posture. And just as in misalignment, the main cause of the deviation is due to error in locating the shoulder landmarks. To extract accurate measurements, machine learning models need to be trained for different armpit misalignments vertically as well as twist along the y-axis. To calculate the chest circumference at armpit level, the approach of inserting a horizontal plane at a landmark such as the right armpit level does not work. One option is to insert an oblique plane inserted between the left armpit and the right armpit. The other option is to take the average of girths at the left and right armpit levels. Similar corrections are required for circumferences in the thoracic region like the waist, abdomen and hip. These problems are aggravated in case of relaxed standing pose. In 3D MajorUp, we fix these problems by using a mix of computer vision algorithms and specifically trained machine learning models trained on such cases. Following table demonstrates the improvements that we achieved with our new approach. As you can see, there is a significant reduction in deviation and in some cases, we have achieved nearly the perfect measurement. Though there are many more challenges related to postures, I am going to discuss one last now which is caused by fused body parts with 3D body scan when the subject is scanned in a relaxed posture. In such scans, there are two main areas where there is a major impact on the mesh quality. The arms get fused with the torso. The fused mesh areas cause problems in identification of armpit points and upper body features. In the lower body region, the meshes around the thigh region fuse with each other and adversely impact the identification of the crotch points and hence dependent measurements like inseams. We know that these are exactly the kind of problems which the A and T poses try to circumvent. But as I explained, it creates its own set of challenges. For a comfort fit garment, the measurements need to be taken in a pose that is the natural and at ease posture of the person. A and T poses tend to make the person stand erect and raise the upper body, especially the shoulders and the chest area. The table in this shows the deviation in the chest, girth and back shoulder width in the T pose, A pose and standing relaxed pose. As you can see, the deviation for chest girth can be as high as 6 plus percent while for back shoulder width it can go up to 9 percent. We also studied the deviation of waist measurements when the subject is standing in relaxed pose. In T pose, waist measurements can be off by 8 percent. Bicep is another part of the body that can measure differently when the subject is standing in relaxed pose it also changes up to 2%. What's our approach to tackle the fused mesh? First, we identify the case of fused body features by using geometry algorithms. Once we identify these cases, the next challenge is to identify the boundaries of these fused parts. Using ML techniques, 
we identify the region of the body and get a context. After this, we locate the pits in the mesh to finally get the boundaries. We then extrapolate these boundaries by using side curve computation method to form a closed curve which approximately models to the human body shape. Here's a quick video which shows the problem and solution. As you can see, in the upper body region, the arms are fused with the torso and in the lower body region, the thighs are joined. After applying our fix as I described earlier, we are correctly able to get the chest girth and the crotch length measurements using 3D measure. At 3D Measure Up, we have faced many such interesting challenges while working with body scans and extracting accurate measurements. And we have solved them using various techniques. So what is 3D Measure Up? We are a perfect body scan measurement platform. We do automatic landmark identification and extract 100 plus measurements from 3D body scans. As I described earlier, we do automatic alignment we also support custom landmarks and measurements. 3D MeasureUp technology can be leveraged by you in three different ways. As an end user, you can use our web application, which runs on any platform or any device in a browser to perform standard and custom measurements. This is ideal for retail users and designers. As an OEM app, you can quickly create your own branded web application deriving from our web application. Any web developer should be able to create one in matter of days. This is ideal for 3D scanner companies to offer their own branded measurement app with their hardware. Third, as an API, we have APIs which can be called from your application or web service. These REST APIs are very simple and easy to integrate. These are useful for companies who want to add value to their existing applications by incorporating body measurements feature. Our pricing model for all offerings are fair and usage based. We do not have any enormous setup cost. We are one of the most affordable solutions in the market today. And we take confidentiality very seriously. We use the data only and only for measurement extraction. We do not use our customer data to train our machine learning algorithms or for analytics purposes. Thank you very much and please visit us at www.3dmajorup.com. So thank you very much Rajesh for this uh, very comprehensive presentation of uh, your solution. Um, may I ask our attendees if we have some questions for Rajesh? So we have different ways. I think uh, I'm turning to Marco. So you can ask some questions in the different uh, chat uh, systems. Um, May I ask Marco if I forgot one way to ask questions or to comment? No, no, no. You can uh, go on. I don't see at the moment anyone like raising hands uh, <laughs> doing so. If you, I can, to... I can see one question from Carol McDonald there on oh, the chat. Where is it? Ah, okay, yeah. So the question is, how would you use this for dynamic poses? So Carol, I would. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm. Let, I mean, I might be misunderstanding the question, but you mean dynamic poses means uh, video, uh, right? So uh, right now we are only supporting static scans, like, you know, 3D scans, which are, which are not dynamic, we don't change. Uh, but we do support multi, uh, any posture for that matter. So, so videos are uh, not, I mean, videos are, you know, multiple frames are not supported, right? 
and so i hope that that's uh, you know carol uh, that that provides uh, some insight into what uh, you know the, the the answer to your question the next one is from don i see on the chat window here the question is are your scans suitable for me medical records and personal history trend analysis so uh, so again our measurements i i mean i mean your question is about are our measurements suitable for medical records so we haven't uh, certif we are not certified by any institute uh, but we are used by orthotics companies uh, which are i believe uh, come in the category of medical uh, industry uh, so and and yes they can be used for personal history uh, because you know the body shape changes we can keep uh, them and then keep you know find out the differences uh, at 200 potential measurements uh, as the body so we have been used by uh, fitness industry for recording just that you know the the shape in body change as the time progresses Thank you very much, Rajesh. Um, I'm looking at my students. Um, no, they are a bit shy today, so sorry. <laughs> so, Carol, Carol, you have another question. So, Rajesh, I don't know if you see the, question, the new question by Carol. I can see. So, Carol has asked that if someone is static running pose, could your technique be used? Uh, I guess, I mean, we identify landmarks in body using machine learning techniques. So uh, it is kind of pose agnostic. I mean, we, we are, you know, we can handle poses and, uh, you know, the most challenging pose is actually for us the relaxed pose because that's where the most fused body parts, uh, you know, body, uh, there is a maximum fusion. In running pose, I have never tested it, but uh, if I, from an algorithm point of view, I think we will handle it. We can handle, we also handle just the partial bodies. So, so as I said, we are agnostic about the pose itself. Yeah, because I, I was going to, to, to ask that, that uh, if you think on a, um, on application for custom made uh, dress or just sizing, you may have just a, maybe a frontal 3D and it will probably enough to guess your measure, but you have an incomplete 3D model. So it's, uh, it's probably harder to do some of the stuff that you do if you have just the front or just a, a limited set of, uh, of the scans. So uh, you also um, tackled that, uh, that problem. So you know how to, to work on uh, partial scans. The partial scan, I meant uh, something else. I meant partial scan is just the foot scan. Uh, if you are saying just the frontal scan, no, actually that's a different problem. That means uh, you have to rely on prediction of the body shape, right? We rely on full scans, you know, means complete scans. I mean, they, are, they should be front and back. Uh, they should be 3D scans, you know, like a watertight mesh. Uh, because if the mesh is not complete, then our measurements actually uh, are geometric. So they are as accurate as your scan. Only uh, the machine learning only we use for identification of body features, but the measurements we extract from the 3D geometry data. So that's why uh, we are not photo to, I mean, we do have a module where we can convert photo to a 3D scan, uh, but again, Obviously, it's not going to be accurate because it's a predictive algorithm there uh, about the body shape. Thank you. So I think uh, we have a last question from Carol. Oh, two. <laughs> so Rajesh, if you can choose one, I think we have two, three minutes more. So please, Rajesh. Yes, so there are, uh, uh, are you looking to expand to body segments such as feet? Yes, we support uh, foot measurement. Uh, I mean, and just use a partial scan, like just foot scan, or now we are working on hand scan. So one of the companies in US, they are leading manufacturer of orthotics 
uh, they use us and they only use food scans. So that we support. And uh, next question is, do you want two views or three views or front and both sides? So for scan, there is no question about views. It's a OBJ model, right, Carol? Uh, it's a 3D scan. So uh, there is no concept of view there. But photographs, right now, we are just relying on one view, which is a frontal view. Uh, we have been working on multiple views and making it more accurate. But uh, currently, we just support frontal view. So, thank you. I think, um, yes, it's all the questions that we have. So I would like to thank you very much, Rajesh, and I think we can um, yeah, applause you because it was a very comprehensive presentation and uh, your product is very impressive. So thank you very much. Thank you, Christophe, for your opportunity and thank you all for attending my presentation. I'm really honored. Thank you very much. Thank you.